What are some laws that sound dumb but actually have a good reason for existing? In France, you can marry a person who's already dead. You need to prove that the deceased intended to marry you. It was instated during World War 1. It was quite common for soldiers to sleep with their fiancé before going to war. If she got pregnant, he was going to marry her when coming back. Except that not coming back was extremely probable. With that law, lots of kids who would otherwise have been bastards, quite a stigma at the time, became war orphans instead. That's actually quite sweet, in a way. There's a law in my home state of Pennsylvania that you can't dispose of a refrigerator with the door still attached, since a child could get stuck inside and suffocate. The one that always is mentioned when I hear about this is about walking around with ice cream in your back pocket. It was illegal to steal horses, but if one walked onto your property, you could claim it. The sweets in your pocket are a lure to get the horse back to your place. This is exactly the sort of thing I was looking for. A+. Plus. The statute of limitations, which puts time limits on how long you can wait to start some legal actions. One can get away with a pretty serious crime if not caught within a certain amount of time. It exists because evidence, both physical and witness, deteriorates over time. It also exists to deter blackmail. It seems weird but it is illegal to have doors opening inward in an indoor public space. Apparently, this rule was instituted because hundreds of people were killed in a fire when all hogged the doors and couldn't open them outward. On a related note, in most states, it is illegal to have an exterior door on a residential home open outward. They must open into the home. This is to allow emergency personnel easier access into the building. Mattress pillow tags are illegal to be torn off by anyone except by the person who buys it. This is because if someone is allergic to any of the materials used in manufacturing the bed pillow and they sleep on it, they can die of anaphylaxis before there is enough time to do anything about it. This mattress is made of bees. In Western Australia there is a limitation period law that says that the prosecutor can only commence a prosecution of a summary offense, a less serious offense within a year of its alleged commission but, and this is the bit that sounds dumb, that the prosecutor can commence a prosecution of a simple offense later than a year after its alleged commission with the consent of the accused. Why would an accused ever give consent to allow a prosecution of himself? The good reason for the existence of this law is that it makes it possible for an accused to negotiate with a prosecutor to downgrade a crime, a more serious charge, to a simple offense. So, take, for example, the prosecutor charges the accused with the crime of unlawfully doing grievous bodily harm to another. The accused pleads not guilty, the charge proceeds through the various criminal proceedings, and a trial gets listed, more than a year after the alleged commission of the crime. On the eve of the trial, the accused is willing to plead guilty to the summary offense of unlawful assault and the prosecutor wants to accept that plea. This law makes that possible. To own a rabbit in Queensland, Australia. You have to prove your magician. Max penalty $30,000. Quote from Queensland government. Due to their particularly swift and extensive breeding habits as well as their love of digging burrows and eating grass, it's estimated that rabbits cost between $600 million and $1 billion annually in severe land degradation and soil erosion. This land damage also threatens Australia's native wildlife as well as our farmers and graziers livelihood. I wonder if they have to got to court and perform a magic trick to prove it. The 2 hour parking meter limits aren't there to maximize parking revenue, but they're to increase the amount of people parking there to prop up the local supporting businesses. I'm glad the meters in my area have a 2 hour limit, if there were no limit, I would have no hope of finding parking, but with the limit, there's always someone coming or going. Many states have laws saying you cannot collect rainwater. The reason being, states have agreements with other states to make sure a certain percentage of water runs down to them. Started when farmers would claim rights to rivers for their crops. Seatbelt law on roads and on airplanes. It's my choice. I don't need the nanny state telling me what to do. Reality, no one gives a frick if you live or die. But if you get in a wreck and you're fat, bloated corpse is thrown from the vehicle at high speed and slams into another vehicle you could kill them. Or at least damage the paint. It's the same reason driving with an unsecured load in the back of your truck is illegal. In Michigan, 
It's illegal to throw octopi onto hockey rinks. The mascot of the Detroit Red Wings is Al the Octopus. And for some reason it became a tradition to throw dead octopi onto the rink in between periods. The reason being that 8 wins used to win you a Stanley Cup. You don't throw it between periods, you throw it as a celebration. Also, Johan Franzen said years ago that he'll pay the fine of anyone who gets caught doing that, and continues to do so. Any law related to driving that seems redundant to novice drivers. A lot of people I know don't signal or stop at a stop sign completely because they're 100% sure nobody is there. But what you don't expect is exactly how you get in an accident. I'm not sure if it's still around but in Atlanta, it's illegal to move on Sunday. Apparently it was created to stop deadbeat renters from moving out and disappearing while the landlord was away at church. I don't understand why suicide is illegal since you can't be charged if you do it. Suicide being illegal means that people like the police can intervene to prevent it. In the Punjab province of Pakistan, you're only allowed to serve one recipe at weddings receptions. If it's rice for example, then that's it, nothing else. Some elites ignore this, though. The reasoning is that many families feel pressured to arrange extravagant dinners at wedding receptions and end up spending more than they can afford. So the provincial government outlawed serving many food items on such ceremonies. I'll serve my tasting platter of many foods. Poker has a lot of rules like that. In most places, you can only speak English assuming the game is in an English speaking country. If you are the last to act and have the best possible hand you have to bet, you can't check, and you are allowed lie about your hand but you can't tell the truth. All are there to prevent collusion. Guinea pigs and some other mammals in Switzerland can't be kept on their own. It's because they get lonely and depressed. Yes, that's right. Our law mandates that if you have two guinea pigs and one dies, you have to either give away the guinea pig or get a new one. Which makes total sense, because this law values the life quality of the guinea pig. It's not actually a law but I know that Van Halen's bowl of M&Ms with all the brown ones removed claws in their contract was for the sound, lighting and fireworks technicians at their live shows. To prove they had read the contract thoroughly and that the concert was going to go the way the band expected it to. People have died on multiple occasions because venue operators didn't follow the ride properly. The biggest dangers are electrical, fire safety, and floor collapse. Adverse possession, where you can win ownership to land if you squat on it long enough. Reasoning. If all real property ownership is just the right to keep people out and have local law enforcement back you up, then the public has an interest in making sure you're actually using the property for something productive. Not just sitting in some far off place with a property right but no connection to the community. Consider the first, landowners in the American colonies. People who had been granted land in Virginia or wherever. The idea was to create an incentive for people to actually send settlers in to cultivate the land. You don't use it, you lose it. There can be reasons behind not inhabiting property. For example, waiting for it to gain value, inability to live there for a number of reasons, ownership of multiple plots of land, sentimental value, etc. People do have the right to hold onto property, as simply waltzing in, trespassing, and taking it constitutes theft in my book. School buses have to stop, open their doors, then cross railroad tracks, even those known to be unused. This came about from a scene in a movie called Where Angels Go Trouble Follows BC The girls were trapped in their bus with a train coming. Even ones known to be unused makes sense. Not a ridiculous amount of unused crossings. And it saves the I've never seen a train though I thought it was unused error. In my city you can't legally fly a kite in a public park. They never enforce it, unless you're flying a 6 feet stunned kite and being a menace. In Chile the kits are super fast in the spring winds and the strings can be very dangerous. Rumor has it that people will coat strings in ground up glass to better cut down other strings. I can see why you might want to ban them. Here in Chicago it's illegal to ride your bike on the sidewalk unless you're a kid. It makes sense when you think about it because it is dangerous for pedestrians. It's not usually that enforced though, although, I did meet a guy in jail that had that charge added onto his possession charge, which is how I found out it was illegal. That's not why, it's hard for drivers to look for bikes crossing the street from the sidewalk. 
which mean that they get hit a lot. Riding in the street may seem more dangerous, but bikes can be seen quite a bit more readily, leading to a lower accident rate. A lot of people think that sodomy laws are homophobic relics, and I would agree were it not for the fact that since 2003, laws regarding sodomy between consenting adults are totally unenforceable. There are still laws banning sodomy today, but they pertain only to non-consensual acts. That way forcible sodomy can be used as a separate charge to, hopefully, tack some time onto a rapist's sentence. Huh, that's actually a really good point. I've heard of those laws before and thought they were stupid, but that actually makes sense. Like the suicide is illegal law. Only somewhat related, I've always found it strange that you can get a ticket for a burned out tail light in your car. It had to burn out at some point, and that was probably while you were driving. Who's to say you didn't check your brake lights before leaving the house, then it burned out while you were driving. I think those when pulled over for that, it should be dealt with by a warning and 24 hours to replace it. If there wasn't a potential to issue citations for failed missing lights, there would be no way to enforce the requirement to have them, which is for safety. That said, I've heard of plenty of people getting pulled over for it. It's happened to me more than once, but I've never heard of anyone actually getting a ticket for it. Not really a law, but recently the Korean government added female-only compartments in the subway. It sounds sexist and dumb, but in Asian countries there are a lot of perverts, groping and taking pictures, so I think it's a good addition. When international students in college are engaged in internships, you must apply for permission from your school first, even if they are unpaid, volunteer-based works. At first I thought it is extremely annoying and dumb but the reasoning behind is plausible enough. They don't want the employers to abuse international students to work in a job that would otherwise be paid if they were done by citizens. That one Singaporean law everyone makes fun of, no chewing gum. Reasons given at the official level vary from littering, and clogging up the public transport, especially on the trains. Seems like a few people constantly stick their gum on the doors of the trains. Freaking up the network, but as it stands, without the gum the train network still fricks up frequently. I read about it, the main reason is that when Singapore started to become a business central, the city was absolutely filthy, streets were spotted black from old chewing gum and other filth. It is perfectly legal to shoot a Welshman in the back at night while staying Chester. This is because this town was raided so often by the Welsh during the Roman period they'd introduced this law. Chester and the Welsh. When I was there on a school trip my host parents told me that the reason the tower only has clocks on three of its sides to prevent the Welsh from knowing the time as no clock is facing them. In some counties in California, it's illegal to go outside without combing your hair. It just prevents people from having to see messy hair. In Kentucky you can't have ice cream in your back pocket. They also have a law stating if a horse follows you home it is yours. It's illegal in some places to refer to your profession as an engineer unless you do have specific licensure to be a professional engineer. It's mainly to ensure that a person is certified to standards to be involved in projects that would directly tie into the safety of its users. This has only gotten strange in recent times when computer programmers are often referred to as software engineers for their job titles especially in the US, and considered part of the group of STEM jobs. Yet the majority of them wouldn't have taken a pay test to actually be legally considered an engineer. Computer programmers can take the test, but supposedly the knowledge required mostly involves the other areas of engineering which may seem out of touch to a typical programmer. You don't really need to know fluid mechanics when designing a phone app, but since engineering is a regulated industry it can even be illegal in some states to call yourself a software engineer without the registration. The pay for programmers is relatively new and I don't think it will be of any real use or interest for quite a few more years. In San Francisco it's still illegal to pile horse shit on corners higher than 6 feet. Probably had to do with accidents before there were traffic lights. Comma in San Francisco it's still illegal to pile horse shit on corners higher than 6 feet. How to explain your state house of representatives. A. O. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.